We welcome now for this segment of some motivational talk. We're going to now turn to our good friend, Mr. Miguel Melbourne, for such. Good evening, Miguel. Good evening, Erwin. And a higher good evening to our distinguished listeners wherever in the world you are tuning in from. We thank you. My name is Miguel Anthony Melbourne. This week on Melbourne Motivation, I'm excited to introduce to you a young Jamaican scientist who is literally working to change the future. So let me tell you a little bit more. Dr. Kamir Ricketts is a bioinformatics scientist at NVIDIA Corporation, developing new methods for accelerating genome analysis and leveraging artificial intelligence for healthcare. He completed his PhD at Will Cornell Medicine at Cornell University, focusing on cancer genomics. Kamir is also the founder of Minds of Initiative, which has launched two career mentorship platforms, Minds of Jamaica and Minds of Trinidad and Tobago. His aim is creating greater access to career mentorship and opportunities for Caribbean students and early professionals. Kamir attended at Kamir attended college at University of Georgia. He's also a proud alumnus of the Herbert Morrison Technical High School in Montego Bay, Jamaica. So as, with that, I do say, King. Dr. Ricketts, how are you feeling today? How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? I'm feeling great. I hope you can hear me all right. Can hear you fantastic. Definitely want to say thank you for taking time out on this beautiful evening uh, to have this conversation with us. And, you know, as we get started, Dr. Ricketts, I'm especially inspired for our listeners to learn more about you because there are many communities across the Caribbean <laughs> and the states where a black scientist is pretty much a mythical figure. Many people yeah. have never seen one, right? Never heard one. Don't have a favorite, uh, but you're certainly uh, your representation changes that narrative. And so, uh, what this is what I figured we can how we can start. I want our, to take our listeners into the mind of a scientist, right? But like outside of science. So I want to play a quick game. I want to give you some rapid fire questions, Doctor Ricketts. And okay. you have about ten seconds to just choose one. Don't think too long. Just choose one. Got All it. Right, got it. Got it. Got it. All right. Let's go. Here we go. Your favorite sport to play growing up. What was that? Uh, cricket. Cricket. All right. Yeah. Are you more of a beach guy or a river guy? Beach. 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 Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Got some easy ones. Are you more a dance hall music or that foundation culture reggae music? Ah, uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to go dance hall. I'm going to go dance hall. <laughs> All right. See, <laughs> I got I got the scientists thinking. All right. All right. Here's the next one. Time of day don't matter. Is it Aki and Saltfish or Kalalu? And festival, or is it oxtail rice and peas with some extra gravy? Oxtail, oxtail. Friends say oxtail, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Never have to finish. <laughs> I'm with you on that one. Many people shaking their heads right now. All right, your favorite subject in school as a kid growing up. What was that? Uh, math. Ooh, see, I like that. Most yeah. people were expecting science. True or false? <laughs> growing up, you always wanted to be a scientist. Uh, false. I, I wanted to be an architect at first, actually. Ooh, yeah. This is yeah. good. This is good. All right. Listen, I know we're just getting started. I don't want to start any problem. But in your opinion, the best parish in Jamaica? <laughs> the best. I feel like I have to go St. James by just default, even though I want to say Portland. I feel like Portland is up there. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. All right, you got yourself out of that one. All right, here's, here's my final question. And take some more time with this one. When you moved to the U.S. to mm. pursue your education, what were two things you miss most back home in Jamaica and why? Uh, I think family. Family is going to be the first one for sure. Like, you know, uh, just being able to be present for all the birthdays and you know, special occasions. Uh, that was that was a, a, a big adjustment being away from from that and having to you know join in virtually uh, over FaceTime or or WhatsApp video call to these things. So that that was a tough one being away from home for that long for the first time. And then I think secondly, just the, the, the food, the food and the vibe in Jamaica. I feel like that was something you know you don't know how good you have it until you leave. So <laughs> you know when I when I left, I was like, oh my god, man, like. You can, you know, the, the cuisine and stuff, and you know, you find good food or find Jamaican food abroad, but it's the, the vibe and the people and the language, you know, I miss speaking Pato. That was a big thing. Like just miss speak, being able to speak Pato, you know, and then go over there anytime you want. That was that was a big one. 
for sure. The, 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 those are two good ones. Trust me, there are millions of folks across the diaspora shaking their head right now, ready to go back to Jamaica. Um, <laughs> here's what I want to ask you next, uh, Dr. Ricketts. You know, you're yeah. a bioinformatics scientist at NVIDIA, yeah. and this is a company that is a global leader in artificial intelligence, right? And so you develop new methods for accelerating genome analysis and leverage mm -hmm. artificial intelligence in doing so for the benefit of healthcare. So yeah. Can you just put into everyday terms for us? What is genome analysis and what is the problem your work is looking to solve? And, and how will that actually translate to better healthcare for the average person in the future? Yeah, we could do a whole hour and so on this <laughs> on this question. <laughs> but I think I think the best way to kind of think of it when you think of genome analysis and what we're talking about, right? So like the genome, that's you know, when you say the genome, we're talking about your DNA, right? And that's kind of the fundamental biological unit of all of us, right? It stores all the instruction that makes us function as organisms, right? So when we're talking about genome analysis now, we want to know, go in and identify and measure and compare all the features, all the things that are in that genome, in that DNA, that code and make us who we are. So we're, you know, you know, we're thinking about genes, right? We're thinking about mutations and all the elements that make up a genome. What do they do, right? How do they impact who we are as healthy individuals, as functioning individuals, how we interact with the environment, right? That's all a part of genome analysis, right? So we 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 will you know think of comparing, say, what uh, average healthy human DNA or human genome would look like uh, versus what you know a patient's genome would look like, or just any any individual in the population, and then we can start to see differences in the genome based on what, what what we would expect a healthy person look like, and that might have a role to play in disease or disorders. That people might have, you know, it might differentiate how different people interact with the environment, like how people react to sunlight, for example, right? Or, or disease resistance, or who is who's predisposed, predisposed to, to develop, uh, you know, certain kind of diseases. That's all encoded, and that's all information that we can get from the genome. So genome analysis is just us trying to understand the genome so that we can get at that information, right? Because when we think about healthcare, you're talking about how can this impact healthcare now? Is that we we are all, and even as a, as a company at Nvidia, we're all trying to pursue this idea of what you know. You you'll hear a term personalized medicine or precision medicine, and that's where we're trying to move away you now in medicine from say a one size fits all kind of approach to treatment. To you know every time we're treating a patient, we're treating them in the context of their specific genomes, and and what that means wow. is that we're taking into account you know say. If, if we know if we know that a patient has a certain kind of mutation that might inform us uh, to go with one drug over another because we know even though we usually give a patient with that disease this particular drug we know that this mutation renders that drug ineffective so now we, wow. we we don't even waste our time and and that you know I always I always um try to, to try to compare it to you know you ever, you ever talk to friends and you'll be like well you know when I have a headache I don't take Tylenol I take Advil because Tylenol Absolutely. never works for me and then somebody else will be like no Tylenol to me is the oh, thing that works. speaks, you know, so we, we all of these differences. So imagine that now at a larger scale in a clinical setting where we can use a genome now to know inform us how to more uh, more specifically treat an individual as an individual and not just kind of this one size fits all uh, program. And wow. I think this is going to be right. something that is going to kind of drive healthcare into the future is being able to understand the genome so that we can, you know, even even thinking of large genet genetic diseases like cancer, right? Right you know that that is a huge one there are so many different types of cancers and they're all a lot of them are driven by these genetic mutations so the more we can understand how yeah. these, these 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 mutations come about and we can target them specifically in our patients then you can imagine that we can get better success rates in treatment right so that's kind of what Absolutely. we're doing you, you know, Doc, right, it, it might have sounded like a joke when I was said, you know, scientists are often like mythological figures, but yeah. we don't often get to hear from the individuals that is doing this work behind the scenes to ensure that healthcare is better. And so your story is just inspiring um, in, in so many ways, you know. Quickly, I do want you to touch on 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 this for me because there's mm -hmm. this big collective effort to, um, you know, introduce students to to STEM and STEAM, yeah. right? That is science, technology, in engineering, arts, and mathematics. But oftentimes, you know, students don't understand the real world application or the career aspect. And you have doubled down by creating an initiative. And so, just quickly tell us what is Minds of Jamaica. Right and mm -hmm. minds of Trinidad, you know, who does it serve and and how do folks go about getting um introduced and, and participating in this platform you've created? Yeah, I think you touched on the big thing is that you know a lot of us when we're coming up, we, we have no clue what we want to do, or we have we have a sense or an idea 
but we don't know what careers are out there. And I know from my personal story, you know, I, I wrestled with my love for, you know, computer science and IT and my love for, you know, the gen genetics and the life sciences. And it wasn't until a random conversation with a professor who he kind of exposed me and told me about bioinformatics as a whole field as com or about computational biology. So in thinking about that and trying to think, okay, there are a lot of other students who are going through those kind of those kind of questions, trying to figure out their careers. And I knew when I was in high school, I wish I had more more access, especially in, in, in Jamaica, to professionals who I can talk to and really ask questions and questions that are more are deeper than um than than the average, oh, how much do you get paid or or, or that kind of stuff, right? You want to ask right. more, 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 more integral questions about the day, the day, the a day in the life of 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 say a mechanical engineer. What does it look like? And what does it look like in the context of my country? Right. right. Uh, mechanic, you know, a lot of us Google what do mechanical engineers do or what do marketers do? And you'll get, you know, mainly European and US um, centric uh, results. So when I was thinking about that, I was like, how do I you know build something that students and early professionals can get more access to people? So that's where the idea for Minds of Initiative and Minds of Jamaica and Minds of Trinidad and Tobago came from. It was like, let's build build a platform where we go out and we find these amazing individuals who are in a wide variety of fields, you know, across, you know, STEAM. Right, and, and put them in one place and then now open that community up to students and early professionals who want to tap in to those people and get information and learn from them and learn from their paths, right? And that's where, so Manage Jamaica houses a lot of professionals who are of Jamaican heritage in a wide variety of fields. And similarly, Minds of Trinidad and Tobago houses professionals uh, from, from Trinidad and Tobago as well. And we just kind of, you know, help students, you know, develop career mentorship relations with, relationships with them we allow people to, to do certain programs. So we have a, a science training program that exposes right. students to bioinformatics, you know, high school students, university students. So uh, that, that's really what we're trying to do is, is democratize access to that career mentorship, right, um, in, in, in the Caribbean. Right, you know, Doc, as, as we wrap, as we wrap, one thing that I absolutely love about your story is that oftentimes we say the Caribbean's greatest export is to its people. We go, mm -hmm. we get the education, and there isn't, you know, a, a large sense that that intellectual property is coming back to uplift the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And your story is a great representation of that. And so on behalf of everybody, and I'm sure our listeners fully understand how the work you do is impacting all of us, right, and our possibility for a good health care in the future. So just thank you on behalf of all of our listeners. I rejam the bridge. So as we wrap, can you just quickly tell us, you know, what's your website? How can folks find you, connect? Uh, how do folks get a hold of you? Yeah, yeah. so uh, with Minds of Minds of Initiative, you know, Minds of Jamaica, you can find us on Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter at Minds of Jamaica. Uh, Minds of Trinidad and Tobago, you can find us on Instagram at Minds of TT. Uh, you can also find us uh, using our website, themindsof.com. And, um, and yeah, I think, I think those are the main, uh, and, and our email. So you can reach out to us at moj at the minds of .com or MOTT at the minds of .com for minds of Trinidad and Tobago as well. And, you know, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn as well. For those who are interested in, in learning more, I want to get in, involved. Or if you're interested in bioinformatics and computer science or computational biology, always happy to have a chat with, uh, with you know, future scientists. Fantastic, fantastic. Dr. Ricketts, thank you so much. Thank you for the work that you do. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed listening uh, to our first scientist on Melbourne Motivation. We appreciate you, uh, Dr. Ricketts. Erwin. No problem. Uh, I tell you, um, very impressed. And Dr. Ricketts, um, you chose you chose dancehall. That means uh, <laughs> some space. So you'd have been at some first Friday night. <laughs> Unfortunately, not unfortunately. You would have been because that was dance all night. But but serious, on a serious note, though, congratulations. Uh, we are very, very proud of you. Uh, I know one person who always listens to this program here in this, uh, an alum of yours, um, Stephen Drummond Esquire, uh, who always shout out Herbert Morrison because a school from the West there doing producing some fantastic individuals. We mm. love that. And, and keep on doing what you do. And I, I and I trust, you know, you know, Miguel, that at some point we can make sure that he, you know, we make him available for the wider community and 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 and, and let folks know that as we celebrate Jamaica's 60th, here here are some of our products. Here Absolutely. are some of our tangible contributors and, and and influencers and people making and trailblazing into areas that normally you don't find us. And and Absolutely. so my, my friend my, Dr. Ricketts, we are very proud of you and Godspeed. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. Thanks for having me. 
And remember, when, whenever whenever prisoners ask about the best parish, always just say that there are 14 best parishes in Jamaica, and you'll get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and set me up, and set me up. <laughs> set you up. That, that's Miguel, man. That's Miguel. That's Miguel. Miguel, how do we remain? In, how do we how, how do we keep informed and 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 find out what you're doing always, sir? Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, my personal and professional goals are to help the youth be best prepared for college, career, and beyond so that we can have more Dr. Ricketts out there. Visit PathWithAPurposeNYC.com. Use the code IRIE, I-R-I-E, for a discount when purchasing our college study flashcards. Follow Melbourne Motivation, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. But until next time, please be safe and live with big energy. Erwin, catch you next week. All the best to you. Stay safe. That's it. Miguel Melbourne, our conversations with another...